It's going to be a short video on changing the uh, oil and oil filter and air filter and spark plugs and adjusting the valve clearance on a Generac 10K slash 11K generator. Uh, you need a filler gauge set uh, that will go down to 3 thousandths of an inch. And so I've got the 3 thousand and 4 thousand out so I can have a go, no go. I'm using a popsicle stick to find the top dead center in the spark plug hole and a 3 8 inch ratchet along with 13 16 uh, standard spark plug socket and a 10 millimeter socket to remove the smaller bolts from the uh, valve cover heads, uh, the covers, valve covers themselves, and the bolts to get at the fan so we can rotate the fan. Using an eight millimeter um, Allen wrench to adjust the valves, along with a 10 millimeter uh, open end wrench to and unlock the locking nut on the valve adjustment. I like uh, this kind of a uh, uh, filter wrench for my oil filter. It grabs the filter better than the uh, than the gripper ones. Have yourself your oil filter. Uh, maybe a couple of spark plugs in case the spark plugs look bad. Uh, be sure to have yourself a gasket in, in case the gasket uh, gets damaged when you remove the valve covers. And uh, even though the first uh, oil change and adjustment here doesn't require a filter, I, I went ahead and uh, uh, got a filter in case the filter looks uh, like in some bad shape. Going over here to the generator, uh, I start the generator up and let it run for a minute or two uh, to warm up the oil. And then you take your your uh, oil drain here, take the cap off, unscrew the cap, and let it drain into a pan. And uh, open up your uh, valve cover oil fill, which I have the valve covers off, but uh, open that cap up. And uh, that'll vent the oil draining uh, better. So, uh, while this is draining then, um, I went ahead and fixed up a little, uh, just used some uh, roof flashing and made a little trough uh, to catch the oil that's going to drip down from my oil filter. Uh, loosened it too, you can see a little drip back there. So, uh, remove your, uh, during this drain here, you can go ahead and remove your uh, four bolts, uh, they're 10 millimeter. Uh, and uh, the valve cover would just come right off. Remove your spark plugs. You can see the, uh, there with the 13 16th uh, socket. And I just went ahead and removed uh, both sides, uh, both sides of the valve cover uh, and spark plugs. Got them out, out of my way. And then there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts here. They're just uh, small 10 millimeter bolts that you remove. You don't have to completely remove this bracket, just the one bolt there. And then the cover just slides right off and out of your way so you can get at the fan uh, down below the muffler to rotate the, um, rotate the engine to find your top dead center on your valves. So as you rotate, pull up on the fan blades, you're going to see uh, your, uh, your rocker arm uh, go up and down. Now, I use the popsicle stick here and put that down in my... But you can use a pencil or anything that you're not afraid is going to get busted down in there. So you're going to watch for, as you rotate the fan, and that's way down inside here, I don't know if somebody will see that or not. I'm going to show you. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there's a fan down in there. And uh, you can reach right down through here. And uh, 
hopefully your muffler is cooled off by now so you can get down in there and start turning that now I've got this uh, uh, to a point where um, this has uh, gone all the way up and uh, as this goes all you have to do is really make sure that there's no pressure on the valve that you want to adjust okay so top dead center or not watch your rocker arm that you're going to adjust as it goes up and down and you're going to back it the opposite way if it starts going uh, putting pressure on your on your valve uh, again so as soon as that's free then you can uh, you can go ahead and loosen up this locking nut it's a this happens to be a um, I believe that's the 10 millimeter too and then you're going to use the 8 millimeter uh, Allen wrench in here to adjust the valve clearance now if you go ahead and stick your 3 millimeter or, excuse me 3 thousandths of an inch uh, filler gauge under here and it feels uh, just snug then try your four thousandths and if it doesn't go there's no need to adjust that valve you can go over to the other valve okay so I don't really want to pause this video I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, uh, make this adjustment so your feeler gauge is going to slip right under here on top of the valve stem and underneath your rocker arm. Let's see if I can pause this. Okay, after you've made your adjustment, you're going to you're going to be putting your Allen wrench in here, and after you loosen up this locking nut with your open end 10 millimeter wrench, you're going to adjust your Allen wrench until you have the proper clearance here. Now, after you've got that adjusted, you're going to lock your lock nut back down and you're going to take your three thousandths, uh, three thousandths of an inch um, field of gauge and, and you're going to slide it underneath here. should be rather snug. Um, then to ensure that that's okay you're going to try a four thousandths of an inch and it just wants to barely start but doesn't want to go under there okay so this is just perfect this is perfect so after each adjustment you need to recheck it and before you put this cover back on you want both of these to be reading at three thousandths of an inch clearance the, uh, the left one here is the exhaust and the right one is the intake so uh, you can see the it's going to the carburetor here or throttle body and here it's going out to the muffler so this is exhaust on this side intake on this side now i've already checked this one that was really fortunate when i checked this one it was just perfect uh, the three thousandths went under the four thousandths uh, uh, wouldn't go under there so i got this side done so i'm going to move over to the other side now and do it it's the same same way i'm going to rotate the fan until I've got the valve com uh, rocker arm completely loose, watching my popsicle stick go up and down as the piston uh, pushes it up and down. It's a little tip. Um, my exhaust was probably okay too. I probably didn't need to adjust it. I ended up, it was way too loose. Um, you need to wiggle this back and forth like this once you got it free and try getting your feeler gauge underneath it while you're 
making this play. It, at the same time, uh, again, after you've checked the three thousandths and it slides under there, even if it's tight, then uh, try your four thousandths, and it shouldn't it shouldn't go even with wiggling this. Okay, so had I wiggled that initially, it the exhaust probably would have been uh, okay too. Uh, I didn't, so I ended up having to readjust uh, the front side here. Once you've made uh, all your adjustments on the valves and uh, ensured that your locking nuts are tight, go and put your valve covers back on and tighten your uh, valve cover bolts in a alternating pattern. And go around this pattern several times, just ensuring all these bolts are, t are snug. Uh, you don't want to crack this cast aluminum uh, valve cover. Then you can replace your cover to the access to the fan. You may have difficulty in getting all these bolts back in the hose. This one was very stubborn and so was this one here. So uh, leave them all loose uh, as you start them all and then uh, if you do have real bad trouble with any, go ahead and, uh, if you only got a couple, then go ahead and uh, insert the majority and then work on the other two that are problems. Then uh, snug them all down. Uh, they don't have to be extremely tight, but just make sure they're good and tight. Get spark plugs for the proper gap. Mine just happened to be uh, 30 thousandths and go ahead and uh, put them back in if your spark plugs look damaged or burnt or anything go ahead and put your new plugs in even if it doesn't call for it you want to be sure your generator is going to start when you need it i like using a standard spark plug wrench because it's got that uh, foam rubber inside it that protects the porcelain on your spark plug uh, if that's all you got is a 13 16th deep well and you don't have the spark plug wrench, well, be very careful you don't break the porcelain. Remove your filter using any type of filter wrench you want. I, li I prefer this kind because you don't have any trouble at all uh, gripping the filter. And be sure you got some kind of a something here to keep that oil from f flowing back there. Alright, so I'll let that drip there for a minute and open up my new filter. I'm using a wick. Um, you can use a, uh, the regular gen generic uh, Generac filter. You can get off the internet. A wick is an excellent filter. And it happens to be a 57 145 for my Generac. Okay, put yourself a dab of oil on the O ring course as you would any oil change to make sure that uh, you got a good seal here. Okay, that's it. Doing good enough. And start your filter back on nice and carefully so you don't cross thread anything. And I just give it a quarter turn after it's after it's hit bottom there. I'll give it just a little bit more. You don't need to get carried away with that, but uh, you're going to be keeping an eye on that for a while anyway. After you run your engine, you're going to want to uh, check, recheck your valve cover bolts for tightness and check your bolts on your cover there uh, that they haven't vibrated loose. I'm going to go ahead and put your little cap back on. 
your oil drain. Put that back up here where it belongs. Can I do this here with one hand? Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, fill that up with oil. Fill your engine oil uh, to the full mark on the dipstick. It would be the sec the hoe farthest up from the bottom of the stick there. Let's just see that full or not. And I'm using mobile uh, super synthetic. Any 100% synthetic oil would be fine. Uh, 5W is dirty. They add oil slowly, periodically checking the uh, oil level, getting close, so um, you don't want to overfill it, so just uh, check it every so often for, I think it's about two quarts. Uh, when you reach your full mark, replace your fill cap and put your dipstick back in. And we're going to replace the fuse here of which I forgot to tell you at the beginning <laughs> you've got to remove this fuse so your engine doesn't start up on you accidentally Oop, wrong hole sorry okay so you're going to uh, Run your engine for a couple minutes so your oil drains well. Then you're going to turn it off. And then you're going to remove this fuse and go ahead and turn your uh, main circuit breaker off. We're ready to start this thing again now. Um, I'm going to let it run just a, a couple minutes. And uh, then I'm going to shut it off and recheck the oil level. Uh, in case the filter uh, isn't full and it needs uh, some more oil and uh, also I'll check the tightness of the valve cover bolts and the uh, cover that goes down to the fan here we go for noise the oil level did drop slightly after the run so I topped it off again. I like to, since it's uh, so clear, the oil so clear, it's kind of hard to tell in the dipstick. So I like to have it fill up that hole. Uh, actually kind of clings to the hole. And then you can rotate your stick around too and double check both sides to ensure you got proper level. So that's good. We're going to put the stick back in and call it good. I was fortunate and didn't have to replace any spark plugs and no valve cover gaskets and didn't have to replace my air cleaner. So everything uh, turned out well there. Uh, the air cleaner is very simple. I didn't go over that, but there's just uh, these two catches here that uh, take this off. And then you just kind of uh, pull this back, pull this up and back, and it'll, you can get at your air cleaner under there. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.